Queen of Hearts follows five people. The first four are all average gain and Joes. They have their own problems with their own personal life and the only outlet that they have is to go online and be somebody else. Throughout the episodes, you start to see their routine, their habits and how desperate they must be to go online to express themselves. In the fifth episode, we follow a character, Tori. She's on the receiving end of the first four characters. And we start to see how someone or something so mundane can become malicious to somebody else. So Queen of Hearts is a series that explores that, how somebody conduct themselves online. And maybe through that, we start to explore how we choose to express ourselves, choose how we uh, interact with somebody else that we have never met before. In the age of Snapchat, Facebook and Instagram, this is highly pressing. Again. Okay, now see me pen pen song scene. It's always exciting to use new technology and I've always been an advocate for digital filmmaking. Having transitioned from film to digital, I, I really see a lot of pros in shooting digital. Uh, so far, it has been very experimental for us. We have produced images that uh, with a conventional camera might not be able to produce. What's exciting is the thought process for the filmmakers have to be different, have to be adjusted accordingly. And our conventional filmmaking ways have to be challenged every single day we shoot. So slowly, you know, day by day, we get used to it and we sort of get into the flow of shooting with iPhones. Shooting on an iPhone is different in a sense where I need to get used to the ergonomics of the phone, the sensitivity of the phone. All of it's very different uh, in terms of how I can use it for framing or placement. Uh, so it's it's a very interesting process. The inherent qualities of the phone is definitely very different from the usual video cameras that I use and all of it's a big learning process and every day is a discovery of what the phone can or cannot do. You need to know your camera or rather your phone well enough, know its capabilities and then you can work all of that into how you want to go about shooting. Um, certainly it has its good points in terms of using the phone mainly for its size and the lightness of a phone compared to a regular camera. We could hide it in places, uh, mount it differently. So I think these are one of the few main benefits that, that come with shooting a phone. It's a very interesting experience. I find it so refreshing actually and um, it also shows how much technology has developed over the years and I feel that using mobile phones also allows it to be more accessible in a way to more people who are interested in doing film. I arrived on set and then I was expecting the DP to be lugging a big camera and having a CA full focus, full focus. No, now the CA has a tablet and the, and the DP is holding something this big. Sometimes I forget that it's there. Which is great, because then as an actress, I think it's a challenge to go, okay, always in character, right? No, I'm a bit more intimidated by this camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the location or the space that we look for, it needs to be even more cinematic, or the art design of the space should be created in a way that, that it looks lived in, or it creates this world that, that we want the audience to believe in. You have to embrace it. You have to work with it, and you really have to kind of like, craft your shots to, to have a certain style and flair to them that makes it a bit more cinematic. So which is why again we use the, the, the movement of the phones and the mobility and all these kind of things. Yeah, to and move through from outside into a car and out again with no problem with the mobile phone. You know? We have a bus scene and usually because um, in bus scenes it's very hard to mount a camera especially when I want a lot of like the window because I wanted the reflection of my actress. However, because the phone was so small, I was able to get a lot of the reflection of my actress to see also like the, the sights that were passing by. I don't stop calling you right? So how did she, like, did she try to break free or did, was she shocked? Like, is Kobe shocked? 
for Queen of Hearts, uh, it's the first time that uh, Vitsi is working on a series that we brought on a, a showrunner or a creator in the form of uh, JD Chua. When JD came to me, he felt that cyberbullying is not a one person issue, it's a whole community issue, it's a whole society issue that it shouldn't be from one perspective and I totally agree with that and as we were chatting we came together and said you know let's also work with filmmakers on with see young filmmakers with with certain perspective of cyberbullying and they are the generation right now to explore the stories so I think that's a great way where we can then in both serving the story but at the same time empowering and collaborating with young VC filmmakers to come together led by JD to tell this uh, story. I think sometimes when we direct our own films we always tend to have like oh, our own like perspective of how things will be done but having um, the, a showrunner helps us to remind us also that I think we are part of something bigger and that like how one film influences the other so I think it's quite interesting and I think also like challenges me to see things a little bit differently beyond like I think my own vision and treatment that I will have for my film Cyberbullying actually is kind of personal to myself because uh, I have a younger sibling who was the subject of cyberbullying when she was young. So uh, it turned her from being a very, very, uh, I would say, happy person, outgoing, sporty, to a completely 180 degree change. So that, I've seen it firsthand on the damage it can do. I think especially when your public image is part of your job and your career. It's very hard sometimes to kind of just take it in your own stride and let it go. Because no matter what, it's part of you. Um, no matter what, it's, it will always be tied to your date. So in this case, that helped me understand Tori's emotional journey at the rooftop a lot. Because whatever that heart has been going through her head, has gone through mine. I think cyberbullying is something very prevalent in our society, especially with like the rise of social media. I think many of us use our phones on a day-to-day -day basis and we consume a lot of content. So it, uh, be it like likes and comments, I think these are things that do like affect us in a way or another. So I think being able to speak about this matter was something that was very close to the heart, especially since uh, I was cyberbullied myself when I was younger. So I think it was something that uh, I was quite happy to tackle because I think there's many people especially like the youths who I think they do face problems with cyberbullying but they are afraid to speak up. 